and we welcome you into Spartanburg, South Carolina and the Wofford College campus where this afternoon the number nine ranked Wofford Terriers who now have a clear path to a Southern Conference Championship and the automatic bid to the FCS National Playoffs. Take on the Chattanooga Mox this afternoon on an overcast and unseasonably warm day. Mark Hauser along with Tom Henson. Tom, if the Terriers can win out in conference play this week and next, they will get the automatic bid to the tournament. And one of the reasons is the fact that the team they're playing today helped them out by beating Sanford last week. <laughs> yeah, you'll take that as uh, these two teams, Wofford and Chattanooga, will get together. Wofford holds the all-time lead, 12 to 11. Terriers have uh, won seven out of ten here. And then the last meeting last week was a must-win for the Terriers last year, and they got it November 12, 2016. Wofford won up in Chattanooga, 36-28. And that broke a three-game head-to-head losing streak for the Terriers against the Mox. A look at the Southern Con from standings, Wofford and Furman tied atop the league. Wofford holds the tiebreaker thanks to their season opening win over the Paladins by a single point. Yeah, who knew that that game back in early September would loom so large, but it does right now. Furman, by the way, is off this week, and they've got two games remaining in the conference as well. Wofford has Chattanooga this week, and then a road game to close out conference play at VMI next Saturday. Last week, Chattanooga went on the road to Birmingham, and Victor Olmo on the game's final play boots a field goal to beat the Sanford Bulldogs, handing the Bulldogs their second conference loss of the year. Wofford and Chattanooga coming up. Four touchdowns, six picks. Daryl Bridges is his back. They'll fake a gift to him, a flat pass, and nothing doing as Bingo Morton makes the catch, but he loses a yard right there. Yeah, Mason Allstadt came up in coverage from his safety position and makes a great sure-handed tackle uh, in the open field. Nice job by the safety. With the ball on the left hash mark, a wing to the left for Copeland. Terriers coming on a blitz, and they got him. Taken down by Colton Clemens at the 16-yard line, and that is big. Ten yards lost on that play. Now it's third and goal from the 16. Yeah, great job by the senior linebacker. Came untouched. Slowed down a little bit just to make sure he kept him in his sights. And then a uh, nice tackle by the uh, Colton Cl by Colton Clemens there on the quarterback, Copeland. Second sack of the year for Colton Clemens. His dad, who played in the NFL here on senior day, his father, Charlie, won a Super Bowl with the Rams. Victor Olmo, who kicked the game-winning field goal last week at Samford on his field goal tries this year. He is six out of seven, and the kick is true. Victor Olmo with a 20-yard field goal, and Chattanooga is on the board first here at Gibbs Stadium in Spartanburg. From the 21st and 10, Copeland, yet another flat pass caught by Alfonso Stewart. He is submarine, keeps his feet. Is the ball out? The Terriers are claiming the ball came out and they recovered it. Devin Watson was the guy who hit Stewart initially. And it is Wofford football. Devin Watson. Devin the Watson guy. comes out of there yep. with the ball. Devin Watson forced it and recovered it. Flips him over. Yeah. Stewart never went down. No, he didn't. You know but what? he Stewart, dropped Stewart it. Stewart just dropped the football. Yep. Just flat out dropped it. Head over heels. Devin got his helmet on it. Stewart hung on to it initially, and then it's loose. And the Terriers have the ball in great field position, obviously. Fake of the dive, here's McAfee, first down run, keeps his feet, and he's in. Touchdown Terriers. Lennox McAfee drives into the end zone. 14 good, yards. Yeah, good job by the right side over there. Offensive line, receivers as well, blocking downfield. That's how you take advantage of a uh, turnover. I'd say no fewer than five white jerseys got a hand on Lennox McAfee right there, but he refused to go down. One. Two, well, maybe not five guys. One, One two, two, three. Three. Yeah. three. All right, so I wasn't close. Extra point on the way, and it is good for Luke Carter, and Wofford has the lead. They do take advantage of the turnover. Cole Copeland, the starting quarterback for Chattanooga, the true freshman. He's got roots at UTC. His uncle Chad was SOCON Men's Basketball Player of the Year in 1994. Very athletic family. His sister is a... 
an athlete, a volleyball player at the University of Florida. His dad played football at Tennessee Tech on second and five with a 7-3 Wofford lead. The Terriers stand up and sit down. Bridges in the backfield. Miles Brown got in there. With Mikel Horton out, Miles Brown has to have a big day, and that was well done. Yeah, first time we've really seen him make a big play today, and he was back to his end position and did a nice job just collapsing and meeting Bridges in the backfield. First and goal from the 10. Bridges remains the running back. And Copeland will give it to him. This time, Dion Priester knifes through and makes the play. The freshman nose tackle. Dion Priester throwing Bridges for a two-yard loss. And Bridges lost his helmet, so he's got to come out for a play. But nice job by the freshman Priester of just beating his man. 6-2-280 from Allendale, South Carolina. Allendale Fairfax High School. Third and goal. Little flat pass. Here's Bridges with blockers run down from behind. At the 11-yard line, it will be fourth down and goal. Colton Clemens exploding to the pass receiver to make the play. Nicely done by Colton. Boy, he is having a great senior year. Yeah, he certainly has. Kind of bided his time, uh, worked, got better, uh, and now is uh, really having a possibly an all-Southern Conference type season. This is the 17th play of this drive. Olmo looking for his second field goal of the day. This is a 28-yarder from the hash mark. His holder is Colin Brewer, and the kick is good, and Wofford's lead is now a single point. Chattanooga holds the ball for 17 plays. Another long drive resulting in a mock field goal. We have 5.56 remaining in the first half here in Spartanburg. The Terrier lead over the Mox is now 7-6. Goodson this time out of the gun. And again, it's Stoddard, and this time he breaks tackles. Bounces it out to the near side. First down run. He'll be dragged out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Finally, the Terriers getting some significant yards right up the middle. Stoddard gets 18 first down Terriers. Key there was he broke a tackle at the line of scrimmage. Taylor Reynolds had him around the waist, and Andre ran through the arm tackle. Reserve DB DJ Jackson ran him out of bounds, but Stoddard busting through the pile that time. Wofford leading the SoCon at 5-1. and one. Chattanooga toward the bottom at 2-4, and four, but the mocks have been stubborn today. 7-6 Terriers, fourth quarter begins. Flat pass, and Alfonso Stewart is upended by Devin Watson. That play loses three more yards. It is third down and 16. That's the second time today Devin Watson has sent a receiver head over heels. And I said Alfonso Stewart, pardon me, that was Bingo Morton who got upended. Will Young missed the block of Devin Watson over there. Third and three Terriers from their 37. 13.06 to play, leading by one. Goodson fakes the give to Stoddard, looking for a seam, and he's got one. Far sideline, first down run as he is out of bounds at the Chattanooga 44-yard line. And this time, I don't see any flags. Again, Jackson makes the tackle for Chattanooga. Patient Brandon, run. Yeah, he waited just a yep. little bit, just a beat to find a blocker. Yeah, and, and he found the blocker in Andre Stoddard and kind of used uh, his off arm into Andre's lower back to get him where he wanted to go. But a nice block out there by Andre allowed Brandon to get the get the seam he was looking for. Wofford just used their second time out of the second half. 10.36 to play. Terriers up on Chattanooga 7-6. Fourth down and about a foot and a half. Terriers go with Goodson under center. Broken wing bone set. Quarterback keeper with the push. Let's look at the spot. Last time I said it was a first down and I'm wrong. Now I'm going to wait. They unstacked the pile. Tom, they did what you like. Under center quarterback keeper. Very simple. Yeah, Rue Daniels is going to come back in at center. Blake Jarosati lost his helmet. I, I guess because I'm a Patriots fan, I've just seen it so often. That's just what the New England does. Fourth and one. Quarterback sneak with Brady. And he got it. Yeah. First and ten at the 33. A good spot for Brandon Goodson, who will work out of the gun on first down. And he throws it to Blake Morgan. Morgan is room down the far sideline. Jitterbugs to the 20. Blake Morgan to the 16. That's 17 yards on the pass. DJ Jackson in the secondary has to get a hold of Blake Morgan. First down, Terriers. At some point, if you're Wofford, you've got to figure out a way to get that young man the ball more. 
Not the worst thing in the world that he hadn't gotten in yet because Walford's burning more clock. Terriers lead 7-6. We're under eight minutes to play in the fourth. You see Stoddard among the leaders in touchdowns. He gets the give right side. He got there. Touchdown, Terriers. His 11th of the year. And that was a classic Wofford Terrier touchdown drive. You know, you hear of so many teams in this day and age, Henson, abandoning the run. Terriers have stuck to their guns. We're going to pound it between the tackles, and sooner or later we're going to get what we need. And they did on this particular drive. First and 10 at the 25. Deep drop for Copeland. Pass to the near side. Trotter has it. This time he is taken down at the line of scrimmage. Devin Watson. You want to talk about a sure-handed tackle in space? Devin just did it right there. The junior from Gainesville, Georgia. Wofford's corners, for the most part, have done a nice job tackling out there on the edge. And Devin right there showing how they've done it all day. Just fourth and 13. You get a stop here, and at the very least, you force Chattanooga to use their timeouts on your upcoming offensive possession. Wofford has one timeout left. The Mox have two. Fourth and 13. Terrier fans rise to their feet. Four receivers for Copeland. Terriers in a prevent formation. They empty out the backfield. He's got five receivers, three coming at the quarterback. Copeland throws underneath. Caught by McQuarters. He has stopped well short of the first down. How about Billy Hinton playing for Detavius Wilson? Takes down McQuarters at the 21. He is a mile short of the stick. Wofford football on downs with 3-11 to play. Great play by Billy timeout. Hinton. Media. Media timeout. And that'll take us to break. Billy Hinton getting congratulated by his teammates. Wofford's lead is 14 to six. They'll have the ball when we return to Spartanburg. Bridges the running back, Copeland out of the gun. Here's the snap, he's looking, throws it back of the end zone and it is Caught, touchdown Chattanooga. Bingo Morton with the catch. It was a well-thrown ball by Copeland. Malik Rivera was in coverage back there and he was signaling incomplete, but the official there closest had a great view of it, signal touchdown. Malik Rivera in pass coverage. Bingo Morton with a diving catch in the back corner of the end zone. And now Chattanooga with 16 seconds remaining in regulation. Obviously, we'll go for two, looking to tie the football game. Wofford leads 14 to 12. They put the ball in the center of the field. Copeland will go up under center. Bridges is the running back. And a direct snap to Bridges. They toss it away to Stewart. He throws to the end zone. It is caught. The play works, and it is caught by the quarterback, Cole Copeland. They ran a trick play and looks like we're gonna go to overtime. Sixth play of this overtime drive, we're tied at 14. Wofford with the first possession. First and goal at the two, again the triangle set. Stoddard right side, breaks an arm tackle, he's in. Touchdown Wofford. That's his 12th touchdown of the year. Depending on what's happening with some other guys, it, for the moment he's tied for the nation's lead and touchdown scored. And my question is, where has that been all day? Yeah. <laughs> That was simple. Tyler Vaughn in at a defensive end spot. He's been big in his career against Chattanooga. Copeland looks to throw. It is caught by Stewart at the three. He backs his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Mox. First and 10, Chattanooga from their 25, still working left to right. Play action, Copeland throws to the near side and it's intercepted. It is picked off by Devin Watson. Takes it down the sideline, 40, 50, cuts it inside to the 40. Devin to the 30, can he beat Copeland to the 20? He will not get to the end zone, but nonetheless it's an interception and Chattanooga will not score on that possession. If he took it all the way back, the game is over. Yeah, Devin, I think, thought about going out of bounds when he first intercepted it, but kept going and give Copeland credit for not giving up on the play. 
I'm not sure who he was throwing the ball to. Devin Watson with some nice footwork along the sideline. Maybe he realized at some point, you know what, if I bring it all the way back, it's two points and we win the game. He I gave it his best a, shot. Would have been seven. Would have been six points. Chance to win it. Hammond will snap. Mosley will hold. 33 yards. Low snap. Spot down. Kick on the way. Terriers win. Wofford has first place all to themselves. And Luke Carter's running to Roebuck. <laughs> Your final score here in double overtime from Gibbs Stadium in Spartanburg. The Wofford College Terriers 24. And the University of Tennessee and Chattanooga Mox 21. You got it. You got it. You got number two. And then there was one. Oh, yeah. yeah. One more. Then there was one. Yeah. Moral of the story is. We got to play better. We got to hang tighter together when adversity strikes. And we got to keep believing that somehow, some way, that we're going to get it done. Tremendous job, defense, offense, had our moments and has some not so good moments. Had some problems in the kicking game, and that should never happen. Never never happened but it made for an interesting game it really did two four hey. i hate to say but uh, anybody got more tackles than you today i don't think they tell them the truth you know what i'm saying great job fellas we control our own destiny vmi i want each and every one of you, listen to me, to go back, look, get a Wofford uh, media guide, or go online, look at 2002. 2002. We finished that year 9-3. and three. And what happened was, we went up there, we didn't have everything jam tight and people on track everybody thought hey that was an easy one well i'm going to tell you right now those guys will fight you to the death so we're going to have to work our tails off this week to get better i know that was a physical game out there there was some leather thrown but the the thing that we've got to do is like we've done for almost going on now what four months Rest, recover, do the right thing, come back tomorrow ready to work. Luke, it's got to be a dream to kick a game winner in double overtime, no less, but I've got to ask you about the punt toward the end of the game because it looked like Coach Ayers had a few words for you. <laughs> yeah, we knew they were going to bring pressure. Uh, I might have held on to it a little bit longer than I should have. Um, I didn't really get behind the shield. Um, it was just a full-on blitz. I should have gotten the ball off you know, sooner. So how good did it feel to redeem yourself? It was awesome. I knew I had to hit this. Uh, you know, if we want to win the Southern Conference Championship, which is our goal, what we said at the beginning of the season, we know we had to win this game. You know, it was a hard-fought battle. Defense did a great job. Offense came in clutch at the end. Um, Devin had a great interception. I just want to do my part. Looked like Miller had to do a pretty good job with that last snap. Miller's outstanding, man. I love him. Uh, he works so hard at holding. Uh, Pre-practice, every single practice throughout the whole week, Ross and him get together at the beginning of practice. And as a kicker, you can't ask for more than that from your holder. He's done a great job. You had a couple of very long punts in the first half, I think a 61 and a 57. Were you just feeling things today? Uh, I guess you had one of those days. Uh, the, the win was a big factor today. Um, the cover team did a great job. Um, at the end of the day, I'm just glad we got a win. What was Coach's message heading into VMI next week? You know, we got one left. You know, we, we have to have it. Uh, I think he still wants us to play a complete game on all sides of the ball throughout the whole game. Um, but we're excited for it. We, we know what's at stake, and we're going to be ready for it. Do you even know what it would feel like to win a game by 30 points? Uh, at this point, we really don't care. As long as we get the win, we really don't care. Take us through this one. It's 7-6 at the half, tight. 
you go to overtime. What what was Chattanooga doing to make it so our offense was just having issues and, and had to grind it out all day? Uh, they came out with a new look for the first drive. Uh, Coach, me and Coach Lang were talking, just trying to get us in the best situation possible. Uh, we came out uh, halftime, I think we only had like 15 plays in total the first half, and credit to the defense to holding the six points. Uh, and we came out, we made adjustments, moved the ball really good in the first, uh, the beginning of the uh, second half. And, you know, we just kept riding that momentum, and we just finding plays that work, and we stuck with them. Overtime, it looked like your offensive line was just doing what they needed to do. Once they figure out, once they figure out things, it's uh, the best offensive line in the country by far. And uh, I'll say that compared to anybody. And I, I have total faith in them. They look at me, they look, and I look at them in the huddle, and we just know we got that click. And when I call the play, they're ready. What's it like when Andre starts getting on a roll? Oh, uh, when Andre gets rolling, there's not many people that can stop him at all. Um, but credit to the offensive line, though. Without him, without them, uh, nothing we do is possible on this team, and we roll as they roll. And we know that, and as long as we, as long as we continue to build off each other, we'll be fine. You win next week, you win the automatic bid. VMI last year here in this stadium, it was 3 nothing in the fourth quarter. What do you recall about that game? Uh, they played, we moved the ball pretty well. Uh, we didn't capitalize on things. We had a lot of turnovers, but you know, it's a new year. It's a new team for them, and I expect them to play just as hard as they did last year. They're a physical team, and they're going to they're gonna fight, fight us to the end, and we know that. And so as long as we come out and execute, we'll give ourselves a shot. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Another physical game against Chattanooga. What's it like playing these guys? Well, every year they play us tough, same um, same as last year. You know, we went down there to their field and made some plays. They made some plays, and we just happened to come out on top and just execute to the best of our abilities and can't ask for more. You keep playing these tight ones. What's that like every game into the fourth quarter? You, you don't know which way it's going to go. Well, it's a nail biter, and I'm sure it's entertaining for the fans, but we just stick to the plan. We just know our coaches are going to come out and give us the best call and put us in the best position to win, so we just go out and execute. Overtime, uh, Devin picks that ball off. What was your thought when, when you saw him secure it? It's funny because last year at um, Citadel, he did the same thing. He told me right before the play, he was like, Coco, I'm about to pick it off and take it to the house. The same he did at this play. He said, Coco, I'm about to pick it and take it to the house and end the game. He did it. I wasn't really surprised, so I'm just thankful for him to get us out of this sticky situation. You did it with your dad here today. It's senior day. What did that mean to you? I mean, it's just a blessing just to have my family come out and just support, you know, just know they're up in the stands watching. I know they're proud because I'm out there giving it all I got and just another victory in the book. So I can't be more excited than that. Congratulations. Thank you. Coach, um, another close one. It, it, we talk about this every week. We did. 7-6 at the half. What was your thoughts at the break? What were your thoughts at the break? Well, we were playing great defense. Uh, offensively, we were, we were just struggling. Uh, didn't do a good job uh, on the line of scrimmage uh, as far as creating some space. Uh, a lot of credit goes to their guys. I mean, that they've got some war daddies inside there and, uh, and it creates some problems for us. Uh, we, you know, have uh, along the way some busted assignments and the next thing you know, you, you're, you're punting the ball. You're, you're not, you know, kicking a PAT uh, for a touchdown. So, uh, in the second half, we, we did better. Uh, you know, we, we tried to uh, make a little bit of adjustment on, on how we were blocking them, and we created some space for Andre. Um, I, I thought he ran extremely hard, made some, uh, some tough yardage. Uh, we had, uh, I think, uh, except for the mistake on the uh, punt game, uh, we, we did a great job as far as the kicking game. Uh, we knew that their team was um, highly skilled. They have a ton of athletes and, uh, you know, they're, they're pretty much the same team we played last year up there. And uh, that was a dogfight up there as well. So uh, I, I, I think they're making progress. Uh, they're they're uh, that young quarterback that they've got, uh, he's a playmaker. He's going to be, he's going to be one of those guys that, uh, you know, as his career goes on, a lot of people are going to be talking about him. Uh, we, we worked hard this week on the prep, uh, and our our kids uh, came focused. Uh, they were ready to play, and. Uh, you, you're fortunate enough that uh, 
uh, when adversity struck, uh, the, the guys hung together. Uh, they kept battling. Defense kept battling. And uh, offensively, we got it going and uh, finally, you know, got it done. But uh, very uh, happy for Luke. Um, if you've if you don't understand what a kicker goes through at that point uh, in the game, it, it's uh, it's it's tough. You got to be mentally tough, and um, he uh, he nailed it, and he gave us a chance to to win the game. Uh, thought Devin uh, Watson played uh, a great game, made a ton of tackles, uh, had that that one that he almost took to the house. And uh, it was uh, a lot of guys just battling. Uh, our defensive guys, they, they were bowing their neck, the up front guys, putting pressure on the quarterback. Uh, coverage wise, for the most part, was really good. We had a busted assignment uh, on the two point play. But uh, the, the good thing is, uh, we didn't come away with a loss, we came away with a win. And uh, I, I think we're eight and one, and uh, w we've got another challenge in VMI. Uh, in terms of guys who didn't play today, Mikel Horton didn't right. play at nose. Mm -hmm. Dotavius Wilson goes out in right. the second half. So here's Billy Hinton, here's right. Dion Priester. Talk right. about the young guys who had to come and play. Well, they had to come and play, uh, and they they had to come and play at a high level. Uh, Dion's one of those guys that. Uh, in the past two to three weeks ha has really uh, started to grow up, uh, started to understand what he needs to do uh, from the standpoint of playing at this level. Uh, he He's tough, uh, he's strong, quick, and uh, the, the more reps that he gets, the, the better he's gonna be. Billy is a guy that's a consistent player for us and uh, you know, he, he's a guy that can uh, cover as well as, uh, you know, fit the run. So uh, both of those guys, uh, hats off to them. They, they, they helped us get it done. In second, the second overtime, you drive yeah. for what proves to be the winning score. It right. looked like the offensive line was really clicking that particular drive. Uh, they were coming off the ball. Uh, we did a much better job of movement and uh, with – Andre in there or Chase in there, uh, those guys don't need a whole lot as far as a, a crease. And uh, they were pushing the line of scrimmage and uh, and giving us a chance to, you know, get a first down and uh, in the first part of it to go and score. Congratulations. Thank you. So the Wofford Terriers have played nine games this year. Eight of them have been decided by a single possession, and it happened again today in double overtime as the Terriers beat the Chattanooga Mocs 24-21. to Devin Watson, who makes big plays and big moments with an interception in the overtime period, and then Luke Carter, who had a hiccup on a punt late in regulation, redeems himself with a field goal to win it, and the Terriers go to 8-1 and one overall and now more importantly, 6-1 and one in the Southern Conference. One more SOCON game to go for Wofford at Lexington, Virginia Saturday. They'll take on the VMI Cadets, and it's very simple. Beat the Cadets, Wofford will clinch at least a share of the conference championship, and more importantly, the automatic bid to the FCS National Playoffs. That'll be a 1.30 kickoff from Alumni Stadium. We'll have coverage at 1 o'clock on the Wofford IMG digital platform at Wofford WoffordTerriers.com slash radio. Another close one. This one belongs to the home team. I'm Mark Hauser. Thanks for watching Terrier Vision.